3D printing is a seemingly magical process that creates objects and shapes from nothing more than a computer design. And seeing as there are now loads of affordable 3D printers suitable for people like you and I to use at home, I thought I'd explain how a 3D printer works and share some of my favorite homemade 3D printed bike parts and accessories. Before we take a look at the list, if you want to know how the whole bike industry is using 3D printing to develop the latest bikes and components, we've got an in-depth documentary over on GCN Plus, and I'll put a link in the description down below. But for now, let's just have a look at these cool homemade 3D printed parts, some of which have been submitted by you guys over on the GCN app. Now, if you're sat watching this video and wondering how on earth a 3D printer works. Let me give you a simple explainer for how a fused deposition modeling or FDM printer works. And this is the most common type of hobby grade printer. These use a thermoplastic to 3D print objects. And before the printing process begins, the user, so you or I, have to slice up that computer design into multiple layers using special software, often hundreds if not thousands of layers for larger designs. That sliced up model data then goes through to the 3D printer which then builds the object layer by layer from bottom to top. It does this by extruding a thermoplastic filament through a heated nozzle and onto the base of the 3D printer. As the printer builds up these layers one on top of another, the 3D part starts to take shape. As with all 3D printers, the time taken to print the object depends on its size, the complexity, and the level of detail that it needs to be printed in. Now, there's a fair bit more to it than that, but to find that out, well, I guess you'll have to watch the documentary. Right, okay, let's take a look at some of these cool 3D printed parts then. First up are special clamps and adapters. Now by using a 3D printer, you can create a part that is almost any shape and size. Well, pr provided you can design it or have the design done for you. This is an adapter which is allowing a Wahoo computer mount to fit an older and narrow style handlebar and it weighs just eight grams. The GCN user Mitch W. Net made this and they say that they think a 3D printer is a tool that every home mechanic should have. Lights next and while almost every bike light you buy will come with a mount, if you want to mount them in a certain way or account for any additional accessories that you might have on your bike, it can be tricky business. But Cycle Seth has made this adapter to mount their rear light and sensor via their saddle rails over the top of their saddlebag. Now this is a cool solution if you ask me, but when designing parts like this, you do have to factor in the strength that the part needs. And this is usually done by changing the level of infill on the printed parts. The infill is measured as a percentage of the hollow space inside because almost all 3D printed components are hollow with a lattice or honeycomb structure inside. 100% infill would be a completely solid part, whereas 50% infill means that half of the space inside is just air. Head unit mounts can be thought of in a similar way to light mounts. You can get very creative if you have the time to spend designing the parts. Now, a few years back when I got a 3D printer, I made this mount that integrated a Wahoo head unit with my Canyon handlebars. And I'm not gonna lie, it took a lot of goes until I had a working part that held the mount and the head unit securely and didn't just break off when you went over bumpy roads. But it was pretty cool to be able to design a part and made it from scratch. This was 3D printed from PLA, which is the most commonly used plastic filament for hobby grade printers. PLA is a thermoplastic which is made from renewable sources such as cornstarch, tapioca roots, or even sugar cane. All oh, right, check this out. This is an indoor training stand which is allowing your device to always be in reach. And this 3D printed hat combines some aluminium bar with 3D printing fixings to hold your laptop using a bike maintenance stand. Now that is pretty cool if you ask me, and it also means if you're doing one of our GCN training workouts, you can just easily turn the volume down if or when Hank's voice gets too much. Great choice of red for the 3D printed plastic parts. And the cool thing about using plastic to make your 3D printed stuff is that there's loads of colors to choose from. And in the past, I've used some certain types of filament which will change color as they get hot or cold. Now, sometimes when you're trying to get your position just right on the bike, you'll need to add or remove some spacers which sit underneath your stem. 
Now these spacers usually come in five or 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter increments. But what happens if you want a spacer that's say three and a half millimeters or an amount of spacers that you just don't have? What do you do? Head down to your local bike shop and buy more? Possibly, yeah. Or you just make your own. Well, this is where your 3D printer comes in handy. Papa Lee, great username, has um, uploaded some homemade 3D spacers into the hacks and bodges section of the GCN app. And I've got to say, these look pretty good. These are a two-piece design, which means they're also great for hydraulic hoses and integrated cables. Cables. And seeing as the spacers on your handlebars are not load-bearing components, they're pretty simple to design and make. But that is a very important point to know because there is no way I think you should try and make any 3D printed parts which are load-bearing on your bike. Quite simply, the materials that you're able to work with are not really suitable for such parts because you'll need to have all the proper testing and all the impact testing done to make sure everything is safe. So the best thing to do is stick to making small little parts for your bike, which in no way affect the structure or the safety. Right now, last up on my list, in case some of you guys missed my garage build videos, I also made my own 3D printed GCN logo, which are then set in resin on my workbench. And it still looks incredible today, if you ask me. Now, this was a design which I made by taking a 2D logo and converting it into 3D using some pretty basic software. And this is one of the best aspects about 3D printing, in my opinion. There are loads of websites and tools available online which are free for personal use in most cases. These can then give you all the information and knowledge that you need to enable to learn the basics of 3D printing and designing parts. Hope you enjoyed this brief insight into 3D printing. And in my opinion, it's a really exciting technology that is growing at a rapid rate and becoming more accessible to more people. And if you want to find out all the in-depth details on 3D printing, well, you better head over to GCN Plus and check out that documentary. And I'm also really keen to hear your thoughts on this. So let me know in the comments section down below whether you've ever made any 3D printed parts for your bike. And if you did enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up and share this video far and wide with all your friends. See you later.